Hi, it's Justin. So we get a lot of questions about how to improve your dust collection on your CNC router. And there's a lot of factors that aren't actually related to the dust boot. And I wanna cover some of those today so that hopefully they help you out. Let me climb up here. Our dust collection actually starts in the back room, which is behind this wall. We have a Clearview CV Max. Uh, I'll give you some shots of that here. So it comes out as an eight inch duct, which you can see coming through the wall up here. The idea here is you want a pretty long run to start so that you have a nice smooth section of air. And then it comes out straight and goes all the way to the length of our shop. Um, just up here, we have a Y. Actually, it'd be a double Y. I don't know what it's called, but it splits off two ways here as well as going straight. So while not ideal, you kind of always just want to run a straight line as much as you can. You want to make this, the brakes as minimal as possible. It's kind of like splitting traffic where you have to then split around and make a decision, right? So it causes friction, it causes static pressure issues. I'm no engineer here. This is my understanding. I think these images from Oneida are really good at showing you the different types of ducting and the way that air molecules interact with it. So to get to our CNC router here, we split off from the eight inch line and ideally we would get to our final size as close as we can to the input source. So if we could bring that eight inch line all the way down to where we go to five inch, it's the dust boot, that would be the ideal situation. But the same goes with, you know, over here at the reduction, if we could go all the way down, that would be the, the best. One secret here is the bigger your duct is, this is all NordFab, the more expensive it is. So to go to 90 degree uh, turn down right there would be more expensive. You're, you're not talking about a huge change, but ideally take your trunk line as far as you can before you reduce it to the final amount. This is a bit of a mess here, but it does work pretty well. So, so this goes eight to six and then <laughs> It reduces down to a five inch where then we have a blast valve with stuff in it apparently. It's very clunky. We must need to clean this out. One of the bigger factors of how well your dust collection performs is how much smooth wall tube and how much friction is in the, in the tube in general. So it depends on what that is, how clean the joins are on the inside. So Nordfab is known for having really clean inside walls. There's not a bunch of welded or bent up tube inside. Flex duct is definitely an enemy of your dust collection capabilities. Flex duct causes a ton of turbulence. So in a simple sense, the shortest amount of flex stuff you can get away with, the better. At some point you're gonna need more of it to maneuver, especially on a, say, a larger format CNC router. You have to have a decent amount, but you want as little as possible We've been trying to reduce maybe another 18 inches here, but it really doesn't let us move to the back of the machine when it's all the way back here. Another factor we've thought about is to remove this front flex duct so that you just have this tiny bit here. And from here to up here, you would have flexible duct because you do need it to move around. But the more flexible duct, the more you're gonna have issues with turbulence, which creates friction and lowers the static pressure inside the tube. If you don't want to know about all of that, just know that the less flexible ducting you can have in your system, especially to an endpoint where you're intaking from, the better. The more effective your dust collection is going to be. Let me take you back and we can look at our dust collector. There's a the clear view. So it's got a cyclone and that drops in all the fine particulate into the bucket down below. And then the air that comes out of that is filtered by these really high quality uh, paper filters that's folded up. So one of the things that Clearview recommends to do every day is to take some kind of board and tap it around the outside. And you'll find that a decent amount of fine dust will fall to a clean out port at the bottom. The other thing they recommend is to take your air nozzle, air, compressed air. I think they recommend 60 PSI. We're probably a little higher than that, so I'll hold it back a little bit, but just spray from the outside in all the way up and down. And you'll find that that'll make a huge difference on your dust collection capacity. If you're finding that it's just, you know, throughout the shop, not as good as you'd like it to be, try and do this daily uh, before you start. And that should make a big difference. All right, so I mentioned this NordFab ducting before. In comparison to other ducting where you need to 
cut it and tape it together and use screws, this stuff has these rolled edges. This is actually considered a nipple. It helps you join two pieces together. You can take a clamp, but you get it down, it snaps together, and you've got a perfect smooth walled tube. The best thing about this stuff is when you wanna move it around, your shop changes, you can just take it and uh, disassemble it and realign it wherever you need it to go. It's also got a pretty good resale value. So it's kind of a weird investment that um, we have decided to make in the shop. We change things quite a bit. All right, so this is gonna seem a little bit stupid, but just in case you haven't thought about this, if your dust collection seems really uh, weak and you've done these other factors, you've cleaned your filter, you have a good design of your system, you should definitely close the other gates in the system when they're not being used. So let me go show you with one of these open. I've got another six inch gate open over here that goes to our edge sander. When I shut that, you can hear the pressure go up in the entire system, which is pretty obvious. Uh, and we've got significantly more airflow now through our dust boot on uh, the CNC router here. 